Professor. Yes. Let me ask you for a favor. Um, are you recording? And if you do, where can I find it? Because I was stuck on the um, assignment um, the other night. Okay. <laughs> so I couldn't, you know, it okay, was well, too late to be like, you know, okay, email you and stuff. Oh, okay. So I'm should recording. I go like on Blackboard? How do I find it? I don't it, know please? that. I'm not sure yet. I will have to email you through the direct email. I'm recording right now. And it's okay. to the cloud, and I will find that out. So there's a couple of things that I'm learning that um, I use. Oh, all there's right. Thank you. Another platform that you guys use where you chat. Uh huh. What's that platform you guys? What's that called? You guys use to chat and talk in? The collaborate. Yeah. Do you mean so I'm learning. Yeah. All right. So uh, for now, I'm going to email you directly. So you have this handout. All right, so, as long as we have it, that's all we, <laughs> that matters right now. Thank you. You can email me, you can email me through Palm Beach State email. It goes right to my phone. I answer you directly. All right, so thanks. This is, your, this is your project. I'm not going to sit there and say this is right, this is wrong. I'm just going to understand how much research that you put into learning your segment of the industry. And our industry is so broad and there's so many experts out there. Uh, you guys see the Food Network, you should really aspire to talk with someone to learn about your industry. I've had many students that have gained internships throughout the world by just doing these interviews. Anyone else? Any questions? So I apologize to you guys that came in late. I thought I gave you the same access code we've been using. I will take a look at that. Um, what I'm trying to do is remove the access code, which I thought I did this weekend. I also apologize because I didn't realize Blackboard sends out hundreds of emails. I've been using Canvas for all these years and uh, Palm Beach State is reverting to Canvas uh, 2021 and I'm an expert in that. And basically, if you go to a module and everything is in the module, all your assignments, everything, Dropbox. I, I submit one assignment and it automatically sets up the Dropbox. I don't do it and I didn't realize you guys were getting so when someone said they got to get like 250 emails, I thought it was from the whole college. It was Blackboard. And I, because when you guys started submitting your assignments, I started getting hundreds of emails. I'm like, what is this? So my Outlook email just every two seconds was getting a, from every class. And it literally was like 200 emails just from different classes. So I get it. I'm learning the different platforms that uh, Heidi is using. And she's doing that because Blackboard has been doing these things. And the school is going to Canvas. So for this assignment, we were just went over the outline. I emailed the outline to you guys last week. Uh, basically, you're going to do it at your own pace. Every week, I'm going to lecture on the segment. I reviewed the textbook. Um, I'm picking the segments. I'm using different slides from a different um, text. But the same information is what you guys have in your textbook. The textbook slides that you have assigned by the author from your textbook from the college. They're not very colorful and they're not very um, well written. So I'm giving you the same information from a different author and I'm emailing you that information to you. So uh, that's what's in Blackboard right now. You have all the chapters. It's already uploaded in there so you can download these PowerPoints. Uh, you have the assignments. The only thing that's due right now, which most of you already turned in, is your, your um, discussion questions. Now, if we were on ground, I would have you guys work in groups doing these discussion questions. And I know Heidi sets you up in groups and some on Zoom or the other platform. I don't know how to do that yet. So for now, when we get off the Zoom calls a little bit early, work on these assignments. I didn't assign any discussion questions this week because you're going to be doing an organizational chart. That's the next segment. So you're going to do your interviews. Uh, you should have already chosen a segment. If you haven't, choose one. You can switch, but when you switch, that means you got to change your interview. you got to change your org chart. So it changes the whole project. It affects everything. So um, your discussion questions have been submitted. Right now, you should be working on your interviews. The next thing is your organizational chart. And then we'll do every time I lecture every week, I'll keep adding pieces to that. Understand. You're not going to be doing a whole budget. You're not going to be doing a whole profit and loss statement, a financial statement. 
but I wouldn't be teaching you properly if I did not talk about that. That's all operations is about is numbers. And I can't stress that to you guys enough. You know, a year ago I worked, uh, not even a year ago. Yeah, a year ago I worked in, um, um, two years ago, I worked in a large resort in Kaloa Landing and it's, it hasn't changed. Everything is about numbers, numbers, numbers. Now we have fun. It wasn't, you know, we set up banquets, we did events, we met a lot of famous people that stayed in the islands and we had fun. But the bottom line is you have to be making money for that or owner or that organization or the general manager, or you won't be in that job very long because that's what they're expecting you to do. And it's not hard to do. I told you guys when I was younger, 25 years ago, I owned three restaurants and I sold them all for profit. So it's not hard to do. It's because people don't take the time to plan. And that's why I'm showing you how to do that. And today with computers and all the software programs out there, we're not doing everything by hand anymore. That's why you can make, read all these statements, but you have to understand what they mean. Any other question or comments on the final project? So what I would like to do is to share with you the um, PowerPoint. Today we're going to talk about the general manager, which includes rooms division and that section of the business. And I want to understand, I want you to understand that that's how we separate hotels and resorts. We break it down. Anytime you get overwhelmed, you say, wow, this place is huge. Just keep, remember, we break it down. Rooms division. If there's a lot of restaurants, we break each restaurant down. Each restaurant has to operate as a separate business. It's like when we le lectured on franchise last week. If one restaurant is losing money, it's going to pull the whole operation down, the whole business down. So each restaurant has to make money. Okay, so let's get into the general manager lecture. These slides are all posted already in Blackboard. That's why you guys got 200 and some odd uh, emails. General manager who manages the revenue management based on the budget, which we're gonna talk about later, and they know that they're losing revenue because their revenue rooms uh, percentage is down, they're going to offer to the revenue manager so many rooms to sell. So the goal is to have 100% occupancy. Now, your large resorts won't sell any rooms for walk-ins off the street, and they limit social media because they want to sell large events. And then that, come, when that comes in, we call that room blocking. So when we room block, we're going to block so many rooms that we, we can't sell to any walk-ins or any social media because we're waiting to book a large event. For example, in San Diego, you have Comic-Con, which was canceled this year. Comic-Con is all Universal Studios and all your comic books and people like that. So all the hotels around the convention center block those dates out for Comic-Con knowing Nobody in the sales department can sell those room unless it's a room block for a certain number of people for Comic-Con. And the reason why is associated with Comic-Con is all the food and beverage that's going to be sold. So the catering sales team working with the sales revenue managers will sell rooms that are blocked and then they will go and start selling food and beverage. So they'll meet with the meeting planners or administrative assistants or whoever are booking these events and they'll meet with them and say, here's how many rooms we've blocked for your group. Any of the large Sony, uh, Xbox, any of those large corporations that have a presentation or doing meetings or training or teaching session, block rooms, they're blocked by the hotel. And then the catering sales staff or the sales staff will meet with their event planner and plan the program, which means we have to sell so much food and beverage based on the rooms that we sold. If you did not do that, you would lose all this revenue in catering and sales. So if you didn't do that and you said, oh, okay, let's, our, let's let people walk in. Anybody that's going to walk in from the street, they all get dressed up and all their buddies go down there to the event. They're not going to buy uh, the food and beverage. They're not going to sell that. So what we do is we say, okay, we're going to block these rooms. We're going to give you these rooms at this rate but you've got to guarantee this amount of revenue in catering and sales. And I do have a lecture and presentation one day all on sales and catering sales 
which is really important for you guys, especially as general manager. Remember, the general manager works with his team or her team um, developing a budget. The budget is based on I'm forecasting or I'm predicting sales. Where the sales come from? Events, tourism. So wherever the area you're at, if you're on a highway, it could be how many travelers come off a highway. But in your large conference and convention centers, it's based on how many events we plan. If it's a tourist hotel on the beach, well, that's you might have to look at the uh, different method of blocking rooms and sales. But your large conferences and business and industry hotels, which my whole background is based on block room block and food and beverage sales. So last week I told you most of the GMs that I worked with my youth when I first got out of uh, culinary school and they brought us on as a food and beverage executive, they brought with them um, their executive chef and their food and beverage director. So GM would travel with a team because he would trust those individuals. He knew, they knew each other. They knew what menus they wanted. They knew what sales they needed to do. They trusted each other with the numbers to back each other with the numbers because it gets ugly. It's easy to manage a hotel that's busy. When a hotel is starting to make cuts and budget cuts and lay people off because there's no revenue, that's, that's a tough hotel to work in. Okay, so the GM has to know the structure of the hotel. He has to know the customer base. They have to surround themselves with the best managers. And the best manager you surround yourself with are customer service oriented people, but they're also people that they know, they know the business, which means they know the numbers. Whoops, where'd my slide go? Okay, so your executive committee. Your executive committee is considered the executive team. So um, the general manager would hire his own executive staff. So um, rooms division, I told you guys last week, there's actually a degree for a, a bachelor's degree in, in housekeeping. If you Google that and research that, that is a big degree. It's a huge department in a large resort. So your rooms division would be executive housekeeper. Food and beverage would be your, like I was a director of operations, which means I had many outlets, many food and beverage managers. So there could be more than one executive shop on a property, more than one food and beverage director. So I was a director of operations of food and beverage, meaning with many divisions under me. So you would have a human resource department, depending on the number of people, you'd have people that do onboarding, um, medical, all these different things that they specialize just in that department. Um, the sales department is the largest department in the hotel. If you walk in and you see all these cubicles and offices and people on headsets and all that, the sales department is always the largest uh, area in the hotel. The salesperson, um, the salesperson really has to have a good relation, working relationship with the general manager and the food and beverage director. Um, and I worked closely with the salespeople because they couldn't really sell a lot of events unless food and beverage was associated with that. And I would have to design menus with them, to design the banquet packets with them, beverage men menus. And that's why in some of my other classes, I'm teaching you guys how to design menus. The funnest thing that I had uh, in the hotel business is designing menus on the fly. Like um, two years ago, I did a big event for um, one of the top um, IT companies. And they basically leased out the whole island of Kauai. It was like two to 3,000 people. And so at Gaylord's Kalamaku Luau, we did a lot of events for them and um, we did one like a five-star dinner for them. And I actually did the dinner challenging because the Luau kitchen is not a commercial kitchen. The Luau kitchen is like you're cooking in someone's upscaled backyard kitchen. And we had to do a, a plated meal, which they weren't used to doing. There was more than one kitchen on the plantation, but the auditorium was associated with that. A lot of hard work, but everyone had a blast. And I used the same crew. I didn't bring anyone special because I wanted the Luau crew to know that they could pull this off and create a really nice meal. And they loved it and had a good uh, time. 
but I had to really work close with other people to do that. But at the time, I was the director of operations and the general manager of that resort. All right, so tonight's lecture is on rooms division, and then your engineering department. Again, it depends on whether you're um, booking or bringing in engineers from writing a contract maybe with a company that comes in and does all your engineering. Accounting, same thing. You can either do accounting in-house or you can have someone do it outside. So those are all different departments. The accounting department usually are not hospitality graduates. The accounting department is usually people that are CPAs and they've got finance degrees, just like human resource people. They're not hospitality people like we all are studying to be. Um, human resources are people that are specialized in those those areas that are brought on in those areas and that general managers and all the other managers rely on, on their expertise. Okay. You do see a lot of companies now out there like um, uh, ADP and all these other companies are doing a lot of these management things. Workday is what we use here at the college. I've used Workday at other uh, places and other resorts we use that. They do a lot of your financial, HR, and workman's comp and all those kind of things for you. Every week you have an executive meeting that takes up a lot of time every week. That's why a lot of places do what they call the stand up. You still have an executive meeting, but the stand up is where you all got together in one area of the resort or the hotel or the restaurant and you just say, hey, here's what I'm doing today as a director. And, um, and this is what's happening and what's booked, what parties are coming, what's VIPs or special guests are coming in. Total quality management, that's a whole different lecture. It's called TQM. Um, I taught this for years and the terminology today is used different. It's just total quality management means thinking if something's gonna happen bad or a poor customer service, what can I do beforehand to alleviate that? Like what can I plan to make customers satisfied? So again, it's planning out something or alleviating uh, an accident or something that's going to happen before uh, the situation. Anybody have any questions or comments so far? No. Anybody? Sharon? No. I'm good. Good? Yes. Thank any you. Any questions? Okay. So tonight's uh, rooms division. Not all of you are going to go in food and beverage. This is rooms division. All right, so rooms division is usually, it could, it could have a different name. It could be the assistant general manager. It could be the front desk manager. It could be the revenue manager. It depends on the size of the resort. The rooms division manager is basically responsible for- Actually, I have a question. <laughs> okay, Sorry. go ahead. Is the, like, when the, especially on the resort, sometimes they have, you know, like a, like a department that call um, vacation clubs. Is that part mm -hmm. of um, room division as well? It's not part of the hotel company. Vacation oh. clubs, vacation okay. clubs are selling timeshares. So it might say Marriott Vacation Club, which okay. is Marriott Vacation Club is based out of Orlando, Florida. And basically what they're doing is mm -hmm. if you own a hotel room, you buy that room, like a, the, you own it as an owner, Marriott Vacation Club is selling that room as timeshare. So they're selling weeks out of that room throughout the year for someone to stay in. So you buy a week. But Vacation Club means, let's say you buy it in Kauai, Hawaii, you don't have to use it there. You're part of Marriott's Vacation Club out of Orlando, Florida, and you can use it in Italy, you can use it in France, you can use it in Florida, you can use it in Boca, you can use it in Bahamas. So oh, they will tell okay. you when that's available. So they don't really work for Marriott hotel segment. They're separate. They're a whole separate entity and they're selling timeshares. Now when the room is booked, even if it's a timeshare and it's booked, it's like a apartment or short-term rental, which um, it's, it's big here in Florida, but Kauai, Hawaii, that's all it was known for was timeshares and short-term rentals and all the hotels do it. So they book throughout the year. But when it's booked and it's sold, then, then that's when we step in as resort managers. We still have to clean the rooms. We still have to sell them food and beverage. We still, you know, all those kind of things. That's where we come in. But the selling part of it is separate. So if they had an issue or a problem with 
getting the room or the, the room wasn't available, they would call Orlando Marriott Timeshare. I'm just using an example. There are many out there that, you know, that, um, that's why I said Marriott's really changing who they used to be. So. Thank you. So rooms division is um, front office, reservations, housekeeping, concierge, guest service, security, communications, and you want to throw in their revenue manager, revenue manager. Modern terms in social media. There's the main concern right there, financial performance. I can't stress that enough to you guys. And guest satisfaction. First of all, you have to make the guests happy. Guest relations. Okay. Now, one thing on here that it says concierge, I want to tell you guys how concierge has changed. On the island of Kauai, there are actually concierge companies. So some of you said you may want to be event planners. You may end up working for a concierge company. So at Speedia.com, the hotel I was at, they had the Marriott Timeshare sales office. Then they had the Expedia concierge area. So when you walked in, it wasn't your traditional concierge where the concierge would say, hello, um, can I book a reservation for you? Can I get you a uh, car can I get you a cab in New York City can I book a show for you it's the same general theory but they're companies now that have brought all these people together they've created their own website and what they do is they go out and buy all these tickets from for example they bought all the tickets at the Luau they buy all the tickets at um, the horseback hiking any um, it's the gliding down on the river um, Waialua Canyon is the second largest canyon, the Grand Canyon. You can take a bus tour there. Anything that they, you could do, they would do. If you're in New York City, they book shows and everything. So they buy up all the tickets. So when you go to them, so when I booked an event like the Luau, I had to, I had a, um, a link. So I'd go to their link and I'd say, here's how much the ticket price is, family, guests, and have all the pricing in there. So when they booked it, it would go in. And then what I would do is I would take the print out and go up and bring people in. They're already paid. They paid through Expedia.com. Now there was walk-ins, but I would say 95% of the people prepaid because when you come to Hawaii, you want to have all your events booked because everyone travels there. It's like here in Florida, right? During the winter months in the north, people all come down there. All the hotels are full, so people are going to book events. So your Expedia desk bought all these tickets out, dinner, shows, theater, boat tours, and then people will go to them and buy them. So when they came to Luau, I'd go to the Expedia uh, desk printout and it would tell me how many people were paid, which is 95%, but it would tell me what table they're sitting at because I had the table arrangement and everything. It's the best thing that ever happened. So I would go up, everyone's paid for already. I don't have to take money, I don't collect anything. I already got the seats with the numbers already on them. So people would come in and they'd already have a printout. I'm on table eight. So I just have my host or captain take them and seat them at that table. Now, do we have walk-ins? Yeah, we were prepared for that. Because remember I told you, everything today is in the cloud. So they'd come and say, hey, I'm in uh, room so-and-so, uh, family of four, we'd like to uh, buy a, a ticket package price in Luau, but we'd sell it to them right there. Now that was very small percentage because people plan their events. So the concierge has, has changed. So many of you that are getting into event planning, or some of you may end up working with these companies, um, that's what they do. And their salespeople, because they go around to all the different hotels and trying to get their business, just so happened in my hotel, we sold them, we leased them space so they could have all their desks out in front of the hotel. So when guests came, we had so many things going on at the hotel that they just took care of all of that for us. And again, that's sales. So those people would report directly to the GM or to the assistant GM and rooms division or the revenue managers because that's revenue. Okay. Then your housekeepers, you have an executive housekeeper. So they bring in teams of people that are trained. Very important, especially today in uh, COVID, the cleaning and sanitary rooms. And that's why name brand companies like Marriott, Hilton, all these companies people stay at because they know what they're gonna get, they know what to expect. And security, lot, some companies have uh, large security departments, depending on the size of the resort, You'll see a um, security office with uh, actually like a police force of people on some of the larger resorts. 
That's another thing you might contract out. You may not take care of it. So on your budget line, how much are you going to pay that organization to secure your property? And uh, here in Florida, we have a lot of gated communities. So they either contract that out or they hire people. And that goes with your hotels and resorts, the same. The main concern for rooms division is revenue and financial performance. If I'm not reserving rooms and selling rooms, I got zero revenue. That's basically the bottom line. And the maintenance housekeeping are considered operation part of the rooms division. They're necessary, but that's not revenue. That's an expense. I have to pay people to clean the rooms. I have to pay people to maintain the rooms. Just like sales, salespeople are creating revenue. So they're more on the revenue side because they're creating revenue. And in hotels, you get bonuses. It's not a nonprofit. When you negotiate a contract as a sales manager or a catering sales manager, you negotiate a bonus package. Some of them do very well. So it's not a flat rate. And then um, you have your guest services. So last week we talked about franchises. Guest services could be uh, Starbucks. It could be a, a leather store selling handbags, all those kind of things. Um, we had a convenience store, so guests could call in, or it was not through the website. They could order all their groceries through our little convenience store on the island, and this was revenue in food and beverage. So they'd order water, cereal, bread, milk, all of that. We'd have it all packed and ready to go. And then when they checked in, one of the bellmen would come with a cart, refrigerated cart, pick all their groceries up, take them to their condo, and load it. And that was all food and beverage revenue. And many of you go to hotels and you have water in room placement, and you grab that water, it's 2 to $5 a bottle. Add that up. That's millions of dollars a year for some of these hotels. And that's food and beverage revenue. Okay, guest relations, that's considered a cost. Security is considered a cost. Anything that's not making you money is an expense. Okay. So the main duty of the front office manager is to enhance guest service. There's nothing worse than walking into a hotel and you have someone that's had a bad day and they're working the front desk. Or they wave you off because they're dealing with someone else. So you want to have the nicest, friendliest people with a nice smile working the front desk. Okay. They interact directly with the guests. Most of your resorts might have some kind of uh, gift or giveaway. Um, Hawaii, the big thing was, is we gave away uh, a lay. So when you walked in the front door, you got a lay. The big thing we did at food and beverage on our resort, between um, 2 and 6 p.m., you got a free um, Mai Tai. So we had a, a bar. I had a bar built in in the concierge customer service area. So the bellman would put a lay around your head. You'd walk in, check in, and we'd hand you a free Mai Tai. Now, it wasn't free. It was free to the guests. You have to add that up and think how much that cost you in food and beverage over the year. You have to pay for the liquor, the juice, and all that. So how do we pay for that? So you have to look at where that's coming off the bottom line expense. The budget. So the front office is the hub, nerve center. Most of your front office managers, assistant GMs, end up being general managers, the revenue center. Um, I think last week I told you the best managers who generate the best revenue usually come from food and beverage. But in the, in the modern times, what's changed with social media and all of your websites, a lot of the revenue managers end up becoming assistant GMs and then general managers uh, running those areas. The resort, some of these resorts, the resort I was at and rooms division made a million a week. And I think probably most of these resorts here in Florida do the same when they're up in the running in season. I mean, think of some of how much they're getting some of these resorts, you know, $550 a night. When people come down for the winter to stay in Florida, they stay a week at least. Okay. There's right there, you're trying to achieve 100%. Most of the time, you don't. So unless you're a resort like South Florida, before COVID, you guys would run 100%. You would. You'd be oversold. Upselling means um, you always see on those websites where it says, can I offer you a larger room for $25 more? Well, that's an upsell. 
So basically they got you into the website, they got you hooked at a basic rate. Now they're gonna start adding things to that. Ocean view, you know, canal, intercoastal view, a look at the ocean, you know, all those different things. Um, concierge level used to be a big thing. You got so many reward points, you could say it's concierge level. And basically what that did was gave you a cocktail, an appetizer, free newspaper and a bathrobe. Not as popular as it used to be, um, because there's so many different offers now with all of these um, social media online sale, uh, selling sites. Supply and demand, we talked about. You want to block rooms and book them. You want to try and get your highest priced selling everything in the hotel, which is food and beverage. We upsell that. On your large corporate or your big organizations, they pay up front, advanced deposits, all food and beverage is paid up front. Okay. Before they 50%, you know, negotiating the contracts, 50%. When they get on property, you get the check from the organization, the corporation, or they've created a open PO where you've gotten approving approval from their accounting firm or their accounting department that's giving you a PO a guaranteed contract saying they'll pay this amount anything over that kind of thing okay that's what it means by uh, a city ledger is um, a certain account set up for a certain group or a certain organization where there's a corporate PO or purchase order uh, attached to it um, from their financial office it's verified by, by our corporate office you know, or it has a company credit card and you verify that they can hold so much on that credit card. Balance of account. Basically, this is all done by night auditor. Um, a lot of the information is computerized. So before you leave, if any of you were a bartender and you had to work or you're a server, you had to make sure your drawer balanced. And if your drawer didn't balance, you either found out why, or you had to pay the difference, or you got fined or something like that. Or, you know, um, where I worked at, they signed a, an agreement. And actually, if they were, they all were given banks because it's such a huge resort. We didn't run around trying to find money and cash it out. So we had these banks and they had bank keys, just like a bank box. So they would sign a contract and with that bank had so much money in it. And it was up to them to make sure that bank had that money. So when a server came in, they always had change. But what happened was a lot of the servers would take the money home and find out that their bank was low and they'd try to borrow from other people. Well, they'd get the, they would um, be written up and there's the three-step rule warning written up and those kind of things. So that's how we managed it. So if you didn't, you, you got an audit, they automatically would come in and audit you. I didn't do it, it would be the uh, accounting department. And you'd get it, even my bank got audited because I have the bank. So you'd always make sure your bank balanced. And so they would call and say, okay, we're doing an audit. And they come down and cash out your bank and you had to sign all these forms. And if it didn't balance, you had better pull money out of your pocket or you get written up or you better find out what happened. Um, that's the same thing with the night auditor. What the night auditor is doing is pulling out all the computer printouts and making sure everything balances. So at the end of the night in food and beverage, all my food and beverage managers had to do printouts. So the luau, I managed myself because it was millions of dollars. So I would have to do all the printouts and make sure my Expedia sales balance versus the guests coming in. If guests paid with credit card, I had to make sure that my Visa accounts coincided that everything balanced out. If I had to pull anything out of my bank, um, I had to make sure my bank balanced out. And then all the printouts were written on, and then we had a cash report that we would do. We would fill it out. And it'd be all bound up and it'd go into a drop box. I'd go to a night safe that would go to accounting and accounting would balance all that. Well, all that information is inputted and the night auditor on the front desk balances their part. I balance the food and beverage and it go to accounting and the accounting verifies everything. And that's how it goes. Okay, so though your night auditors work at night. They're a, um, a unique group of people that... Um, you never see them come in, but they're the ones that are always balancing uh, the, the books of the front desk. Ratio of the room occupancy percent, 
they got to see how many rooms sold at what price. Years ago, it was so easy because we had a standard price or an upsell. Now, with all the social media, you get different prices and who's selling what. So easy calculation. This is the old traditional way and method of doing it. Again, today, everything's computerized. And it's based on revenue managers of who's selling what. So in financial management or one of your other courses, you guys talked about revenue manager. Many of you are going to be this person. Okay. So they're used to maximize room revenue, social media. When the rooms are blocked, you work with catering sales. You tell sales how much they can sell a room for. So basically, you as a revenue manager, you're going to know what it costs to clean the room, what it costs to maintain the room, um, what it costs to turn the lights on. And you're going to use an average. So you're going to take an average if a TV breaks or a plumbing has to be done or a mattress has to be changed. That's part of your budget. That's called a line item. So you're going to have a line item in your budget of what it costs to run a room. So your line item is going to come from housekeeping. Housekeeping is the one that buys the mattresses, buy this, buys the towels, buys the soap and all that. They're going to tell you what it costs them to set up one room. And engineering is going to take an average of thing, everything that breaks. They don't take like what it costs to build one room, but over a year's period of time, they're going to take an average of what it takes to maintain the room. And they take that average and they put that on one room. So all of these expenses are based on one room, and that tells you this is what it costs me to operate this room in this hotel, in this city, or this town, or this county. And then from that, you can't sell anything below that. And then there's a mark that most people use in retail of what to sell that room at. Most retail is 35%, but that hotel will have a base because they may say, well, we have to take into consideration who's selling the rooms of sales, all these different things. Remember, you have to go down to the bottom line. Room sales is only part of a general manager's responsibility. So revenue is bringing this money in. Whatever it costs to run that room is our expenses. And this is huge. I always associated myself with the large resort or convention hotel because you always made money. I didn't have to worry about people walking in in a restaurant. Because if I had a convention and I need to book one or fill one of my restaurants that doesn't, wasn't doing well, what I'll do is I'll sell them so much um, dinners or so many tickets per person. So um, I could say, your group is going to eat in this restaurant on this date at this time, and I'm going to put in 10 people or 20 people. And I'll talk with the chefs of that restaurant, the managers of that restaurant, and say, can you guys handle 10 people? Yeah, we'll do a special menu. We'll do a write-up. Here's what I want you to charge. So that guarantees that restaurant, that number of people. Now, you're not going to um, necessarily do a very high price or a very low price. It's going to be a medium price, but it's going to be guaranteeing you 10 people on that night. So the more conventions and conferences you do, the more business that restaurant will get. And it could be a steakhouse in your operation, and the company says we're going to spend you know $100 a plate. Okay, You've had groups out on Kauai that they were in uh, – uh, technical sales software from California that they won all these awards and their company sent them there and gave them all kinds of money to spend and that's what they did. Okay, so convention groups, large organizations, they block the rooms, they're guaranteed a flat rate in the room, but we oversell them in all the food and beverage. That's where we make, you want to keep them on property, that's the incentive. Use our facilities, buy in our, buy our leather goods and purses, buy our groceries, buy our jewelry and our jewelry stores, all of that is what you're trying to do. And that's where um, you're trying to keep them on property. You monitor reservations, cancellations. Um, so right now with COVID, you can imagine all these budgets are shot. They're all gone. So now how do you even budget and forecast in a, in a, in a world like this today? It's very difficult, but you have to do it. So it's based on monitoring your reservations. Again, it's computerized. Trends, that's a forecast. So you have to forecast. Forecast is history, what happened last year. I mean, people that are going to forecast for 2021, I don't even, I wouldn't even know where to start. The whole year 2020 is wiped out. Forecast is based on previous sales, history, trends. Like Comic Con, they knew every year. Those hotels knew they were a bit busy. Um, think of sports right now. Have you guys been watching the media? They've been interviewing people uh, baseball, football, basketball, hockey. 
all the hotels and bars around them are, di are dying because they're used to re uh, revenue. That's in their forecast. Right now, football season's opening up and they still can't have any um, fans. So all those businesses can't forecast their sales. I'm going to take a break here. Anyone have any questions? Because this is one of the key points of um, Rooms Division. Andre, are you? Uh, I don't see you, Andre, but you said you're going to uh, do Hotel Rooms Division? Yeah. I did, but does this I, help you with the uh, what you're? Yeah, thinking? this chapter does help me a lot. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. This chapter does help me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you're really going to focus on revenue and sales. Um, that's the biggest piece, and um, that's why when you guys take jobs, you know these large resorts. I mean, you're going to do well because once all this comes back with the revenue and everything. Um, Uh, it's going to come back fast and strong and we're going to need people like you that are ready to go. Uh, so a revenue manager, where am I going to get the revenue? Where am I going to sell? Where are my guests going to come from? Okay. And then we want to overbook those rooms, oversell. How are we going to do that? What's going to draw them to the resort? And that's where your entertainment managers come in. Okay. So trends is that's that when it says previous trends, that's forecast. We'll talk about that when we get into our budget. I have to forecast my history and my sales to predict my future sales. We have to take in everything that's happened. Like if you had a hurricane or out west right now in California, all the fires or all the hurricanes on the islands and the Bahamas and Hawaii, um, you know, up in the northeast, you know, all that stuff going on. Um, strikes. So, oh, Professor. Yeah, go ahead. Who's, who's, uh, I don't see you. Who's uh, talking? I'm Thelma. Okay, go ahead. So the rooms division would, the, the person, the, the director of the rooms division would work closely with the reservations department in, 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 in generating um, sales and stuff for the hotels. They would, the sales department. Yeah, right. so okay. rooms division and sales work closely together. The sales, right. they rely on bringing in, um, events, bookings, all that. It's just right. it's like food and beverage. So sales would work and say, okay, I'm blocking all these rooms. So in our executive meetings, the sales department would tell the revenue manager, you need to block these rooms, these dates, I'm working on an event. And we would hope right now that people are trying to block rooms for 2021, that a lot of things that were canceled that people are rebooking. Right. Um, and it's not necessarily, most of these type hotels aren't looking at weddings. We do have a wedding season. And we do schedule for that. But right now we're trying to find the big events that are happening with major corporations and okay. sales. Yeah. Revenue manager totally relies on sales. And I do have another lecture and then you have the sales department, then you have the catering sales. So depending on how large the hotel is, the sales department, they could have four or five people just working in the rooms division. They could have a team of people catering sales managers. So it depends on the size. And here in Florida, these resorts are large. So I expect that, you know, when I, when I used to walk through, go to my office, sales was there, you know, 24 seven. And there was probably, depending on the number of the size of the resort, there's a lot of people in the selling and all of them worked in different areas. So rooms, catering sales, some people are just assigned to certain corporations. Um, so that's how big it could get. And then your smaller hotel, it could be one sales manager that does all the catering sales and does everything. And you have three or four conference rooms that, you know, your local um, hotel that you do those. Like in um, Philadelphia, when we talked about the Marriott with the, uh, the Marriott being there in all the convention rooms, they're doing that because people can fly in, go to those meetings, get an airplane and fly right out. So your sales managers book and everything they can in there. Now, hopefully they can tie in rooms to that overnight. So yes, sales is very important. I'm gonna do a whole different lecture on that. Any other questions on revenue manager? Anyone that's going to the hotel side, resort side of rooms division, this is very important. You're gonna be in this area if you wanna move up to a, a general manager, run your own property. Very important to understand. 
And again, the, the executive management team have to be tight. The GM, sales, and her or his team, the F and B, their team. Any more questions or comments on this area? Okay. Anyone else focusing on the rooms division area? Sales? All right. We'll get into breaking down the, uh, how to break down a budget later. Well, this is talking about your energy management system, which we all know we have today with Bluetooth. Um, you can time sensor lights, air conditioning, all of that now. The hotels that have the individual room air conditioners, those are the most inefficient, very costly. That's why everyone's trying to get thermostats on the wall and centralized um, systems for each room. Uh, mini bar business is very big. <laughs> generates millions of revenue in some of these large resorts. They set them up now so they're computerized. Can you guys stay in a mini bar that's computerized? Anybody see those? I've heard mini bars, they have uh, weight sensors. Is that considered computerized or no? Yeah, what it does is um, even if you're picking out uh, alcohol, a chip, uh, a peanut, the weight sensor takes it out and automatically charges your portfolio. Your portfolio is your room bill. And, you know, when people start having a couple of drinks, they may have a few more, but they start eating snacks. And uh, you're captured in a resort here in Florida or one of your major resorts, and you really have nowhere to go. So it's a big profit. That's why they're in the rooms. Okay. So it's same with water. Water in the rooms is a big profit. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, but so. um, professor, yeah, I think when when we go to like a resort, the mini bar, I see like everything is included. It's like they don't have like um, if you if you consume something, you're gonna have to pay, right? Well, that 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 could be true. You could book that could be one of your sales feature in that hotel resort. Hey, but it's not it's free to the guests, but you have to pay for it somewhere. So when you're in the back oh. office figuring out all that out, you have okay. to figure what that's going to cost. You're either going to charge more for a room, you got to charge something because it's not free. You have to buy it. It's free to the guests, but how do you pay for it? You know? Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Because I, I see like overseas when when you go to a resort and you see like a mini bar, it just you you know you just have to grab it. You don't have to yeah. go um, probably at the restaurant or at the kitchen to grab something. If you, you know, in your room, um, run to refresh yourself. But I, I, I see like when there's like, um, for example, if the hotel, if it, um, it's not a, a, re, um, a resort, when you consume something at the fridge, they charge you for it. Right. Well, there's two ways they do it. Housekeeping will have a inventory sheet. Okay. So every time they clean the room, they'll open the the bar door up, and then they know how much they put in that that uh, cooler, and then they'll look at their inventory and she can say, "Oh, there's three it's supposed to be six in there. There's three missing." They will fill it out and put three, take it down to the front desk at the end of the shift, and the night auditor will add that to your portfolio. But the weight censored ones now are very popular because they operate through the P point, uh, PMS system for the front desk where you take it out, it's weight operated. So it automatically tells you what you took. It's programmed per price. So it knows what to charge. Now it's, it's a computer, so somebody programmed it. So it goes right to your portfolio. Your portfolio is your final bill. Um, when you're in a captive area, it's very expensive. Um, what you're saying is the island that you're at, it's free to people, but it's free to the person, but you as a manager, you have to pay for that somewhere. So how are you paying for it? Room sales, you know, um, food and beverage, maybe you're overcharging somewhere it has to be paid for, or it could be a corporate, you at the local hotel don't have to worry about it because you're corporate. Well, basically nothing is free. <laughs> 
it's, it's just it's, like a you know true. like a coverage <laughs> sometimes advertising well it's true but to you as a consumer it could be free in other words okay. you can have a good rate on the room and it's a uh, free to you like i said when guests came into the hotel we had a free my time well i'll tell you that cost ten thousand dollars probably a week so how is that paying for how was i paying for that right so um i was lucky because the corporation wanted to do it as a um you know a guest accommodation a guest service a sales kind of thing so we as a local resort didn't have to pay for it the company did remember i was talking about marriott if you become a franchise and marriott forced those breakfast coupons on us yes they did the same thing with drink coupons okay. but you're a marriott franchise the marriott's not gonna say well hey we'll give you money to do the drink coupons now you got to scramble and figure out how am I going to pay for these drink coupons, right? So your island where you were giving away the free drink, it's, it's great for the consumer and the customer, but you as a manager, operations manager, how are you paying for it or who's paying for it? Hey, if the, your, let's say you own more than one, your company owns more than one hotel or they're a management company and they say, hey, we'll take care of it at the corporate office. Don't worry about it. that line item will be paid for. Well, then what you're going to do is say, I need a, an accounting number, a PO number, or something to put next to that line item to make sure I get credit for all this alcohol that's coming out of my mini bars. And then they'll take care of that at the corporate accounting office, and that's taken care of. And they, hey, drink all you want. But if it's local and they, the company tells you, you know, hey, Sherilyn, you're, you're a manager here. We want to do this promo. You're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to pay for it, but you're going to find a way to do it. And then you're scratching your head saying, oh, man, I got to figure this out. Well, it's not going to come out of rooms division because it's a beverage. It's going to come out of food and beverage. So you have to make that up somewhere. And I'm giving you realistic situations because these, these things happen. When they gave me that breast, breakfast coupon from Marriott, all medallion level, didn't matter what medallion level, got $10 off for breakfast. Well, how much is breakfast to begin with? $15? So the average check for the servers came down, so their tips were lower. They were very upset. The food costs went up for the chefs. They were very upset. So I had to figure out a way to fix that. And um, that was a challenge. Our sales revenue went down because it went to the Marriott Corporation. But we were franchisees, so we had to pay for that. Okay. So all your there's, there's software programs for everything, computers, systems. That's why when we talk... Um, uh, when Zhao Chen said that uh, the weight system, all these are computerized now. So that helps. So you guys aren't going to be accountants. If you are, you're in a wrong program. Um, these are two systems I've been talking about. The PMS system, the PBX is a really antiquated system. When I started, we were using PBX. There are many different front office systems now because everything is in the cloud. You don't have to spend hundreds of thousands on a system. Um, but basically, these are management systems. Now, one issue I want to bring up with you guys that we had with a management system, in your large resorts, your food and beverage systems have to talk through the front desk so people get charged on their folio. What managers didn't re understand is you had a food and beverage operations manager buying a system, and then you had the front desk person buying a system. When you get together with your executive management team and you guys are buying a new system, make sure the system at the front desk talks to food and beverage. I took over a resort where it didn't do that. It was a nightmare because everybody's charging room uh, on the rooms in a resort. They're not carrying wallets. They're not carrying credit cards. They're charging the rooms. So the POS system had no problem reading it and putting in and punching up their bill, but the night auditor, it wouldn't transfer to the front room rooms division so he didn't know what to charge people on their portfolio and we had to change software and fix all this and for months we were transferring stuff to the uh, night auditor so understand your software systems very important very important especially in large resorts guest reservations that's the pbx and the pms systems um, your sales department will have that marriott has a whole system has anyone ever worked for Marriott in sales or the sales department? Anybody? 
Marriott has a whole system where you have to actually go to corporate training, sales, food and beverage, all of that, where it's a whole software program that they strictly use uh, for their sales team because everything, if you're Marriott corporate uh, property, everything has to go to their corporate office in Virginia. So not only does it talk to Virginia, it's got to talk to all the resorts and properties. So you have to go to their training for that. And they have a whole language of their self for all their sales codes and events and things like that. There's a, there's a whole class that you could teach just on software and sales. Billing guests is usually automatic now, it's computerized. Now we have the app, right? Hilton and Marriott have an app where you can um, put your portfolio in. This is what I use. I don't even have to go to the front desk and get a key now. Um, my portfolio, uh, I'll push my phone and say, do you request your key? And I push it and I swipe it up against the door and it allows me in. Um, a lot of play things are changing um, in the hospitality industry. We'll talk about that when we get into sales. That's a whole different lecture. Okay. Security, you gotta know the budget. Are you gonna hire your own security people, put them on payroll, or are you gonna hire a security firm? It's still a line item. You have to weigh out. Is it worth hiring someone, paying hourly rate, workman's comp, benefits, or is it cheaper to hire somebody? Okay, I just talked about new surveillance locking system. You can do it on the app on your phone. Biometrics now do Hilton's website, Marriott's website. I have them both on my phone. Okay, so now, um, Charlene, I think you brought up time sharing. So now you can go into a hotel. Marriott's doing condos now. They're doing long-term stay. They're time sharing all over the world. So now things are changing. Um, the uh, vacation rental uh, apps now, uh, what is it, VRBO, all of those have changed the way we do business now in hospitality. And Marriott has jumped on the bandwagon, all of your large corporations. Reservations, again, um, revenue hold management. On, I don't, hold on, um, Professor, yeah. because I didn't really get um, um, the last part you said. Okay. Yeah. Um, how many of you have booked reservations um, through vacation rentals by owner? Um, I normally do it. Um, you know, it depends on the on where I'm gonna stay. I normally go to a club vacation because I know the price are great, or I do it. Um, I shop online. Yeah. So does everyone else. Yeah. That that's. That's, that's what's changed in the hospitality industry. Okay. So all your big hotel companies, they had to get online with that. They had to become part of that. Otherwise, they would lose room revenues. Um, people were leasing out their homes and all that, uh, those kind of things. So that changed the industry. So Marriott got into that. Okay, these are all machines for reservation guest services bell person okay large resorts all have bell people and then concierge we talked about okay housekeeping um again housekeeping is uh laundry your large resorts will have many people on the housekeeping um so now with covid they all got to go to different certifications and training uh, executive housekeeper you actually can get a bachelor's degree as an executive housekeeper. Okay. okay. Um, your spa business, uh, that became really popular in the early 90s. Um, that a lot of the, the hotels lease out to spa companies and organizations they lease that space out it's much more um, revenue driven if it's leased versus managing it in-house you guys can research that if you want to get into a spa laundry is by housekeeping 
Most places have their own machines because it's cheaper. Um, some places may have to send them out. When our machines broke down in, in um, Kauai, now I'm telling you guys, these machines are 150, 200,000 per machine, and we probably had 20 or 30 on property. When a machine broke down and you'd have to have someone come take it, it costs a fortune. Um, LEED, L-E-E-D, LEED is a green hotel signature. Many of you are gonna wanna be, have your property certified as a manager's LEED. Has anyone ever heard of that before? Anyone? No. Mm -mm. Anyone ever work in a LEED hotel? Okay, any of you doing your, your um, Andrea, you're doing your project on hotels? Yes. You wanna research the um, LEED, it's a, a green award. It's an award that hotels wanna get showing that they are a LEED property. In other words, you recycle, you're using um, biodegradable products, cups, straws, all these kind of things. There's a whole certification that you go through and people strive to get that, especially in Florida, Bahamas, all the islands, 